Maybe the bigger story that everyone seems to be ignoring here is that riots are being planned in cities across the country, nowhere near Memphis, physically or culturally. Cities have nothing to do with Memphis at all. They're the opposite of Memphis, Seattle, Portland, Oregon. Antifa is apparently planning riots in those places tonight. Why is the question? But first to the facts of it, Jason Rance covers the Pacific Northwest for us. He joins us tonight. Hey, Jason. Hey, Tucker. Yeah, we're starting to see some organizing in Portland, Seattle, but also New York City. And what we're seeing is a lot of police departments are assuming that there's going to be civil unrest from these groups because of the way that they've operated over the course of the last couple of years. And this is going to be a little bit of a test for these Antifa activists because they've effectively changed the way that they organize. They used to do a lot of this very much in the open. They did it openly on Twitter, but now they've sort of learned their lesson. They've been going to apps like Signal or Mastodon or Telegram, where they have a little bit more control as to who actually has access to the information that they're putting out there for the organizing. On the one hand, that means it's a little bit harder to track if from, from a police perspective. But on the other hand, it also means they're not likely going to have as many people show up immediately. And one thing that they've learned, and they are open about this, is that they will go ahead and try to overwhelm a city's police department. So, for example, here in Seattle, we have a decimated police force. And if there are two, three, maybe four groups, they don't even have to be that large, but if you get about 10 people in each of those groups at different locations, you are going to move the police around, and they are not going to be able to properly do any of the security on all four of those spots. So what you effectively have is these open vulnerabilities that will be exposed if they end up doing those kinds of strategies. And what we've seen so far, police departments around the country have decided to hold their second watch shift so the officers are staying on board. You've got the third watch, which isn't even supposed to start for another hour and a half, but they're already in. And so you're seeing this kind of mobilization just in case they start to get violent. And when we start to see the violence, usually around 7, 8 o'clock at night, our time on the Pacific Coast, and they are pretty standard in what they do. They march around. They hope that there's a larger crowd of non-Antifa activists that they can hide behind. They, of course, are dressed in black blocks, so you can't identify them. And they will take their, their shots at cops whenever they can. And for the most part, city leadership, whether it's Seattle, Portland, D.C., San Francisco, officers are basically told, you're going to have to take a lot of this abuse to a point because if they get involved, they could end up making this even bigger. that uses violence and no one does anything. And it's really, equal protection has just evaporated. Um, sad, really sad. Jason Rance, appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Tucker.